There is a delta neutral crypto trade that gets discussed a lot. You buy one Bitcoin on spot, you short one Bitcoin perpetual future and you collect the funding payments. In theory, the direction doesn't matter. If Bitcoin goes up or down, one leg offsets the other. I wanted to double check how this actually performs, so I backtested the simplest possible version using real Binance data. No leverage, no rebalancing, no timing rules, just holding both legs continuously and tracking the funding. I pulled BTC USDT funding rates from Binance Futures and hourly spot prices from Binance Spot API. Funding is paid every eight hours, so each funding timestamp is matched to the most recent spot close. For one Bitcoin position, funding PL is just the funding rate multiplied by the spot notional. Summing that across the period gives the equity curve. Now, for the results. From January to late November 2025, so essentially today, starting with a notional of about $93,000, the cumulative funding PL was just under 5,000. Annualized return was roughly 5.7 ish percent. Volatility basically zero, which is ridiculous if you think about it. Sharp ratio over 30. And at this point, you should note that this is too good to be true. And to add on top of these ridiculous measurements, the maximum drawdown was close to zero. Now, on paper again, this looks incredible, but these results are not realistic at all. There is nothing like that. There is no free lunch. There is no free money. If you look at the funding series itself, it's noisy and often negative. There's nothing stable about it. The only reason the equity curves look so kind of smooth is because the model removes most real world risk, which are essential. Just to give you an example, to name a few. It assumes perfect offsetting between spot and perpetual future. Even though the basis, which is the difference between futures and spot, moves all the time. It uses spot price as the notional, even though funding is based on the perpetual's mark price. Obviously, it also ignores all trading costs, financing costs and slippage and it does model margin requirements or liquidation risk. All of these matter in practice and they would make the strategy far more volatile than this backtest suggests. So the takeaway is simple. If you strip out the actual risk, the strategy looks almost risk free, but that version isn't tradable. If you want me to run a full realistic version, this is going to be super, super interesting. This will include, for instance, perpetual OHLC data. So data on the future itself. Therefore, we also got basis PL, mark price effects, fees, obviously, borrow costs, hedge rebalancing, and also margin. Just let me know, and I'm very happy to build it in a separate video. Thanks a lot for watching. And bye-bye.